Hi there, so on the 7th of March we were discussing states of consciousness. Um, consciousness is how we describe our awareness of internal and exter external stimulus. Um, and then we, so we defined that and then we went into um, talking about the circadian rhythm, which is a biological rhythm which occurs over 24 hours. So sleep is a perfect example of one. Um, we further delved into sleep and um, specifically sleep stages is something that we spent a lot of time on. So REM and NREM, rapid eye movement um, is kind of where a lot of the dreams occur. Um, so we talked about the stages So sleep is initially started by the transitional phase with the slowdown of your heart rate and your um, respiration and breathing, sorry, respiration is breathing, and then decrease in your muscle tension and your body temperature also starts to drop. There are two types of brain waves there, low and which are alpha, and then theta, which is a lower frequency. And then you go into a deeper state of relaxation where theta waves, so the ultra, like the lower frequencies, are dominating your brain activity. And then you delve into the third and fourth stages, so deep sleep or slow wave, so you're even to a lower four hertz um, frequency. And your heart rate and breathing continue to slow. And then you move into the fifth stage, which is REM. So this is, um, the brain waves are similar to actually when you're awake, which is super interesting. And then this is where your dreaming occurs. Typically paralysis of um, non-essential, quote unquote, muscle movement occurs here, but it is null and void when there are um, sleepwalkers involved with. So, um, you know, we talked about Freud and Jung, as well as Rosalind Cartwright's um, beliefs on dreams, and then touched on some lucid dreams, sleep problems, disorders, and then how substance use and abuse can affect those. And then I only have like 20 seconds left. We talked about the brain, uh, which was super, super, super cool. We had three human specimens in class and that was really awesome to see. So thank you for bringing that in. Um, three meninges or protective layers for the brain. Uh, the first one is dura matter, which is the protective first one, tough and leathery. It is the one that contains the largest blood vessels and it essentially holds the brain in place. And then there's the arachnoid meninge, which resembles a spider web, hence the name. And it is made of like a more fibrous tissue and it cushions the brain. And then pia matter, um, is where the capillaries that stem off of the larger blood vessels in the dura matter. So these all keep blood off the brain, but um, maintain the blood flow, which is great. Uh, the brain is evolved from bottom to top, so oldest to newest, which I thought was really, really cool. And um, another fun fact that I really found fascinating was the cerebral bellum is folded, um, so it's to increase the surface area, and it is, when expanded and flattened out, almost half the size of the cortex, so it's almost 40% when flattened out, which is just absolutely fascinating. And then the only location where the two hemispheres, right and left, are connected as the corpus callosum. Uh, we obviously talked about more than just that. Um, we touched on THC and its influence on the brain for quite a long time, and that led us into the brain maturation and the three steps. So the radical increase in white matter. Second step is kind of do your thing. Um, so just use what you're going to use of your own brain. And then three, the third step is pruning to um, make the most efficient brain possible. So super cool. I wasn't here. I'm in 
out of state right now. So I did get some notes from Selena. So thank you, Selena, for being amazing. And I plan to review those and hopefully update another little video. Um, but yeah, thank you. Bye-bye.